Old school runescape has a fascinating side that not many players know about, and that is speedrunning. Whether it's bosses, quests, minigames, skills, or even glue scrolls, there is infinite amount of possibilities for getting the best world records out there. And today I want to showcase my personal top 10 list for the best speedrun attempts in old school runescape. Please do keep in mind that as time goes on, most of these records will be broken. That is just the nature of the game. But as you're gonna see later on in the video, some of these records have lasted for years, and they are so fast that nobody even dares to beat these times. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Number 10. Our first world record comes from a content creator, Molgot Kirby, who managed to kill Vardorvis in 31 seconds. Now this may not seem like a lot, but the techniques used in this fight will definitely leave you in awe. The fight starts way before that, because to get the maximum potential damage, you need to get Vardorvis boss slayer task, which amplifies your damage by 15% with a slayer helmet. Secondly, you need to have an alt account just outside waiting, and this alt account can restore your special attack and feed your supply whenever needed. And then the fight begins. The very first thing Gerby does is use spellbook swap for two things. Number one, to get a troll from Arkea's spellbook, which adds roughly about 30 damage for the kill, and secondly, get vengeance from Lunar's spellbook. Then you need to get a double ruby bolt spec for 220 damage, otherwise the record is going to be impossible. Kirby proceeds to turn off protect from melee prayer so Vartorvis hits the vengeance for maximum damage. He double claw specs, firstly hitting 77 and then following up a 100 special attack. We are now about 12 seconds into the fight and Kirby has already dealt over 400 damage to Vartorvis. He continues swapping between altar ring for damage potential and ring of suffering which deflects damage back. And now it's all about the sight. Vardorvis has an effect where the lower his hit points is, the less defensive stats he has, which works perfectly with the sight as it requires a lot of accuracy for big damage. Notice during the Vardorvis minigame he winds up a basic attack which is required for the world record because as soon as the minigame ends, the character automatically attacks Vardorvis. And to end the fight off, Kirby lowers his hit points with the locator orb and equips full Darak for that 74 juicy hits, leaving his final time at 30. 31.2 seconds, a record that still stands today. Also, as a side note, just today at the time of recording this, Kirby also managed to get the world record for Leviathan. So this guy is legit, one of the nicest content creators. Congratulations to him and make sure to go check him out. Before we move on though, I want to announce the winners of this week's giveaway. If you didn't know yet, I managed to get two Dumekin Shadows in three days, increasing my bank value by 3 billion GP. So I thought, you know what, let's do a giveaway to the community and here are are the winners. Congratulations to all of you and if you also want to participate in future giveaways, make sure you subscribe to the channel and come join our community discord, links are in the description. Okay, let's continue. Number 9. This time we're moving over to Corrupt Gauntlet where Smork3000 got a world record that hasn't been broken in almost 2 years. If you don't know, Corrupt Gauntlet is all about getting the right setup. You spawn in a room with just few tools and it's your job to craft the armor and weapons to fight the final boss. Firstly, it gets the 1 in 3 chance for a weapon frame so he can make his magic staff. He then starts collecting supplies for tier 1 armor which is gonna absorb a lot of the damage in the final fight. Keep in mind he's also currently vengeanced and he has to pray correctly to make sure the vengeance doesn't go off early. He gets very lucky and immediately finds a dragon which drops the upgrade to his magic staff and this is also where he wants to get hit to get that vengeance damage in. While killing the dragon he scouts the other two rooms as well and finally he needs just a little bit more corrupted shards to grab after all of his items so he lures the NPC over to make sure no time goes to waste and that's it. That's the entire preparation phase. Just to put into perspective for the average player it takes around 5 minutes to prepare the boss fights. Sometimes more, sometimes less. For him it took 1 minute and 43 seconds. Also as you can see he doesn't have any food in his inventory because he's gonna use his prayer as a resource. Smork has a total of 6 doses of prayer potions and using the retribution heal he can continuously heal himself back up when getting low hit points. Oh and here's my favorite part. Did you see that? He used his fist to force Hanlev to swap to melee prayers. But that's not what the impressive part is. He managed to flick Piety for that one cycle to squeeze in even the smallest margins of damage. Every point of damage matters. The goal is always the same. Force Hanlev to pray either range or melee so he can continue to DPS with his magic staff. Hanlev swaps prayers after every 5 attack. So Smork 3000 does 5 attacks with magic and then 1 with melee, then 5 attacks with magic and 1 with ranged. And he continues 
finish this cycle until Hanlev is dead. As you can see, this requires a very intense prayer swapping. You really can't make any mistakes here. Everything has to be to perfection. And turns out, six prayer doses was exactly what he needed to get the world record run because he's out of food and he gets the kill. Congratulations to Smork3000 for one of the most impressive world records in the game. Make sure to go check him out. Number 8. This time we're moving over to fight caves because Pahis managed to get one of the best RNG runs I've ever seen in my life and getting a 19 minute and 10 second fire cave world record. When doing fight caves, it's all about utilizing the best rotations depending on the time of the day. You see, fight caves has different spawn points for monsters depending on real life time and the best rotation for world records currently is number 5. But that alone isn't enough to get the world record. Pahis is doing something that nobody has ever managed to do. When you're doing close to a 20 minute run, you are much more likely to make mistakes than doing something like a 31 second Vartorvis KC. So with things like fight caves, it is important to have every way memorized and utilize everything you have to offer. Like for example, look at this. I'm gonna play it in normal speed and then we'll slow it down. Yeah, that's it. Did you see it? So let me slow it down for you. He sights the meleeer, does a 7-way switch to range gear, swaps to prayer tab for regular prayer to get more DPS, closes his inventory to blow up the meleeer once, brings his equipment tab up to remove his primordial boots for the plus 1 range bonus, moves closer to the major, closes his inventory one more time to attack the meleeer, brings his inventory back up to swap to twist the bow to attack the major, summons a troll and moves his primordial boots to the right place in his inventory for the melee switch once again. And all of that was done in a matter of 3 seconds. Even slowing down the video to 50%, you can't really keep up with it. And he did this for 19 minutes straight. Bahis himself said that this was actually a pretty sloppy run, but he got insane RNG with his hits. And I don't know about you, but if that was sloppy, I can't imagine what a perfect run would look like. And in the final wave, Bahis lures the chat over one more tile so the healer underneath the chat doesn't get to him. Bahis then proceeds to noodle the gloss pack, but it doesn't matter. His run so far has been so clean that he's actually about 14 seconds ahead of the second place run, which to a surprise of nobody is also claimed by Bahis. So, Congratulations to him for getting the first and the second place and hopefully we can see a run in under 90 minutes very soon. Number 7. For the longest time everyone in the old school runescape community thought that true 600 invocation raids in Domes of a Mascot was impossible. And all of it was because of one invocation, the 25 minute timer. Even if you enter the raid with 600 invocations and complete it, if you don't make the 25 minute timer it would turn into 580 invocations by the end. Until a few months ago when 8 speedrunners got together and figured out a new strategy to help achieve this feat. The simulation said it was possible, but players just couldn't figure out and oftentimes the runs were around 28 minutes. But then the speedrunners figured out the Bone Dagger special attack, which reduces defense, doesn't stack on top of each other. So they swapped out few Bone Daggers for Pandas God Swords and got much more consistent with their times. Before this run, they got a 25 minute and 9 second run, which already proved their point that this has to be possible. And then one raid after that, they got 24 minutes and 37 seconds timer. If you've ever done Dooms of a Mascot in an 8-man raid before, you know how difficult it is to coordinate with 7 other players. The good thing here is that all the players know their exact role, where they have to stand at each moment, what their job is in the team and so on. This is extremely hard to coordinate and takes a lot of time and practice to get right. Like the fact that they complete the monkey puzzle in 1 minute and 45 seconds, which usually takes more than 3 minutes, or the Kefris puzzle in 40 seconds, or the fact that they're constantly utilizing the red is partisan which gives 25% damage increase to your entire team for 6 seconds. My favorite part about the entire raid is when the 8 man team has perfectly allocated the skulls in a way where everyone heals equal amount with the yellow carries partisan. It's like a beautifully coordinated dance in a way. Every player spreads, gets one skull and then they finish off the final skulls together. Also just to put into perspective, the warden at this level with 8 man team has over 17,000 hit points which is the highest 
up any boss in the game and the team manages to clear this out in less than 3 minutes. And then we have the final part which is absolutely chaos all around but the team gets a nice double rare carry spec and everyone hits their Sarah crossbow specs which brings the final time to 24 minutes and 37 seconds. Congratulations to these 8 beasts for doing something that for the longest time was thought to be impossible. Good job guys. Number 6. Okay let's take a break from bossing a little bit and showcase how the most iconic quest in RuneScape's history was completed in less than a minute. If you don't know, Chegex introduced quest speedrunning to Otsuko RuneScape in 2022 and that has brought many new speedrunners to compete for the best possible times. One of them is the iconic quest Cook's Assistant and one player named Aiku managed to get such an absurd time that many believe this won't be broken ever again. Firstly, the way Aiku sets up his speedrun. He has a total of 5 alt accounts all prepared on different stages of the quest to get the best possible run. His first alt account is right at the beginning of the quest which keeps the cook from not walking away. Because if you have a dialogue with an NPC, they never move. Aiko also starts by getting a 1 in 64 pot of flower drop from an imp before the quest even starts. And he has two alt accounts to lure the imp to his pot. He also has an alt account ready to talk in general store where he buys the bucket and his fifth alt account is near the bridge where he lured the chicken for the egg drop. After that, the only thing left for him is to milk the cow and be perfectly in cycle for the home teleport and he manages to do just that which leaves the final time at 59.4 seconds. Seconds, making it the very first Cook's Assistant completion in under 1 minute. Congratulations to Aiko for setting one of the all time quest speed running records. Number 5. And just like that, we go back to raiding. This time it's Chambers of Seric 308. And Isoka, Trio Elysian, and Shady Pro managed to get the timer of 9 minutes and 14 seconds for the entire raid. The first room is Vasa, which they literally one shot. Well, almost one shot. They all get hit 80 with Vengeance activated, then they use Sarah Crossbow Spec and finish off with the twisted pose. Vasa loses 600 hit points in 4 seconds and just like that the first room is completed. In the second tightrope room I love this little trick they use where one player lures the rangers over so they don't attack, the second player then proceeds to go over the tightrope and the third player is waiting ready to telekinetic grab just so they can save 2 extra seconds on completing the room. The third room is shamans and by tightly keeping close to the walls the shamans will never jump up which gives the three players freely time to max dps and finish the room very fast. The fourth room is Vespula and the portal drops so fast that if you blink you're gonna miss it. All three players hit their Sarah crossbow specs which is 330 damage in total and they finish off with one or two Dumagin shadow hits, again another 10 second room. And after the team finishes with crab room they only had the great arm left and as you might already expect it goes pretty flawlessly. What I noticed is that the team oftentimes doesn't do the normal 3 to 1 and 4 to 0 cycle and instead favors raw DPS over that, which loses them some hit points but gives more damage. In the final head phase, Isoka has 7 hit points left, no supplies, no nothing and he refuses to eat his purple sweets because that would mean losing on DPS so instead he goes for the retribution play and he pays off leaving them with the final time 9 minutes and 14 seconds. Congratulations to this epic trio for getting the world record on Chambers of Seric normal mode. Number 4. This is my personal favorite on the entire list, just for the sheer amount of luck and damage it involved. I'm talking about Salra, one of the most well known bosses in old school runescape, and a player named MK20 who managed to get the world record time in 25 seconds. The run itself is quite simple, once again you need to be on a slayer task for Salra to get that plus 15% damage amplification. And MK20 starts off by doing vengeance on Lunar Spellbook before the fight, then swapping over the Archaea Spellbook for the trolls, and then later on gets another vengeance in the middle of the fight. Firstly, it gets some nice hits with Tumek and Shadow. It's 44 to 41 to 41 to 48 and it just keeps going. Then Salra swaps phases and he starts sniping with Dragon Knives. Since the maximum damage you can do is 50 to Salra, this is a perfect weapon for world record attempts as the special attack has two attacks and the maximum damage per attack is 31, which means you can technically hit 62 and since it removes 25% of your special attack, 
attack that gives you an option for maximum of 248 damage with your special attack and that's pretty much what we see him do as well he gets insane dragon knife special attacks and finishes the run with a twisted bow leaving the final time to 25.2 seconds now the craziest part is that he actually missed a few cycles here and there and the maximum potential run could have been 22.8 seconds and gotta be actually put that into perspective how insane this time would have potentially been which is one in a 1.5 million chance which is about 15,000 hours of gameplay to get the perfect run so on average to beat this record again it would take players years of trying over and over again to beat his Salra records of course until new gear comes out and the chances of beating the records become much more likely but until then congratulations to mk20 for getting an insanely rare and awesome world record number three we already saw tombs of a mask at the amazing run we already saw chambers of seric run and now it's time to also showcase an absolute banger theater of blood run to end off the three raids this time it's duo Do with finish flash and ador as the two epic speedrunners and their final time was 1958 which was the first time anyone has ever managed to beat the duo theater of blood in under 20 minutes the run itself is clean that's all there really is to say about this as you've already seen these players know the in and outs of every room and every corner and how to take advantage of every single game mechanic so in the end it really does come down to rng of your hits can you get that nuclear max dps to snipe the records my personal favorite part of the entire run is them just absolutely tanking the scottesag maze by using game stalls and also phoenix necklaces to avoid the damage and just brute force going through it it also helps that during versic they have some absolutely crazy dps and when it all came down to it they got the hits they were looking for which gave them the final time of 90 minutes 58 seconds Funnily enough, literally today, that record was broken again by Morsky Besk and Resk when they got 19 minutes and 51 seconds, which was 7 seconds faster than the previous record. In any case, big congrats to all these 4 players for pushing the limits on what is possible in DOB. Number 2. Okay, we have 2 more left and I want to take a step back from BBM and showcase one of the longest speedruns in old school RuneScape, which is getting the max cape. Two players went head to head, Heepok Xiong and JCW. Both very experienced players with thousands of hours of gameplay under their belts and they decided to host a competition between themselves on who can get the max cape in the fastest amount of time. The end result was 771 hours and 3 minutes for Heepok Xiong and 791 hours and 50 minutes for JCW. Some of the crazy rules were that you can use any amount of money in the game to gain experience, meaning you get crazy training methods like this where the players used to make crystal armor, which is the fastest training method for crafting and smithing coming in at 20 million experience an hour and costing about 5 billion gp to get from 70 to 99. My personal favorite training method was for slayer where they would use auto accounts to group up monsters then log in with their main account and use special attack along with Tin's bulwark or crystal halbert to just massacre the entire monster group then log out and repeat the process. This is the very first time we've seen this type of speedrun where players record themselves going from zero to max cape and has set a decisive benchmark for future players looking out to break the record. In any case, congratulations to Heepox Young and JCW for being the first two players to do this and hopefully we'll see many more like this in the future. And now it's time for number one spot and I think this is one of those records that's definitely going to be broken again and again over the years. It is the Inferno speedrun. Of course, it has to be Inferno, one of the most sought out pieces of content in the game. At the time of recording this, the current world record holder is Rastaman with a time of 41 minutes and 5 seconds. First of all, Rastaman is like the guy for the Inferno speedruns. Just to put into perspective, the second place currently is an entire minute behind of Rastaman. And when we're talking about world record attempts, one minute is almost like an eternity. Which means Rastaman currently is in a league on its own. And it definitely shows this in his Inferno runs as well. I have never seen something so clean in my life. When we saw that Fight Caves run earlier on in the video and it was super clean wave after wave, this is almost similar but way harder to solve. Because firstly, you don't have predetermined rotations. Every wave is semi-randomized and you have to solve everything on the spot. Secondly, the monsters are much much harder to kill. And when most speedruns require the players to have luck with DPS, this is much more than 
understand that. You have to sort the waves correctly, but also not take damage while doing so. Let's take a good example, which is wave 62, one of the harder waves during the run. He gets dragged out for the nibblers, which is intentional, and Rastaman starts flicking four monsters at the same time. The Major, the Ranger, the Bluffs, and the Pats. The Melair is also behind the pillar, but is about to teleport out very soon. Luckily, the Debo slaps really hard, but he gets hit 42 just before the Major disappears. He then lures the melee over behind the pillar and manages to get chance but somehow survives. Rastaman however refuses to eat up because DPS is more important than playing it safe. He blowpipes the last three remaining NPCs while flicking the prayer once again and that is just one of 69 total ways he had to solve in record time. It takes a lot of brain power and practice to get to this point and so far not many players can do what Rastaman does. With 44 hit points left and no prayer potions he manages to get himself to suck and now it's all gonna come down to time. Can he get sucked before his prayer runs out? He reserves his prayer points and his run energy as much as possible. He gets the ranger in time and he lets the pillar tank a few hits for him and now he has to start tanking the major and chad at the same time while also DPSing suck. And he's gonna wait one more cycle for the healers and this is do or die situation. He tags all the healers without killing them because he realizes that he needs to kill suck now and he gets it at the exact same time as he also dies which puts puts his final time at 41 minutes and 5 seconds. A truly fascinating world record. Congratulations to Rastaman for this epic run and that was my top 10 list for my personal favorite world records in old school runescape. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all tomorrow with another one. I love you all very much. Bye.